Hey everybody, uh, this is Nate Zeisler. I'm here with John Steinmetz, a good friend and collaborator. We just had a, uh, a couple hour long conversation about the upcoming career development conference, uh, NetMCDO National, or excuse me, the, the network of music career development officers uh, okay. will be hosting that here. Uh, in LA at the Colburn School, we're really excited about that. And uh, one of the things John and I always talk about, we get we get into uh, talking about careers, uh, especially careers of of aspiring artists and musicians. And uh, we got to talking about my lifestyle lab this morning just a little bit. And uh, John is, uh, as many of you know, is a well-known bassoonist and composer. And uh, John, I'm just curious about your your impressions about you took took this little quiz that I have up. I'm curious about your initial impressions on on what you thought about the quiz and if anything bubbled up for you. Well, first of all, I think it's a great idea to get us all thinking about how we want to live our lives. What, yeah. You know what our priorities are, especially our financial priorities, because as musicians, I think we're that topic is still kind of taboo. We're supposed to just be into it for the art. We have to think about how we're going to survive in this kind of crazy economy that we have. So yeah. because people have different tastes in the way they like to live, I think it's great to discover that. Because I didn't know that any of those things about myself early on. I was just always doing everything by groping and blundering. Sure. Um, but it also reminded me that I haven't been very often the instigator of the projects I've been involved in. Usually I wait to be invited oh, to participate in something. So if somebody invites me to write a piece or somebody invites me to be in a festival or in a, in a gig or something like that. The, the power of uh, live streaming. We've got other, yeah. other people around us. Life is going on right here. Um, and then within those projects sometimes I would ask a lot of questions and and maybe try to make some kind of change but yeah <clears throat> and it's just interesting to me that I think I had I think I did have a certain risk aversion you know uh, so that I didn't start a concert series for instance sure on the other hand I I got invitations to odd sorts of things that did not at all fit the profile of a bassoon player or a composer interesting the biggest one well, and I ended up saying yes to them, where other people go, no, that's I don't do that. But I would often be intrigued and say, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. So um, I got invited to be part of a computer science research project that hmm. initially was based at uh, Atari Computer, and then some of the same researchers went to Apple a few years later, and I was for many years a consultant on this project. And I was there as a musician and as an artist, but interacting with programmers and software designers and hardware designers who were trying to think about what the future was going to be and uh, luckily the guy who was head of this project thought that artists and educators and other kinds of people other than te technicians ought to be involved yeah it was great for me it was an income stream I hadn't been expecting at all yeah but more importantly it made me use parts of my brain that otherwise I wouldn't have used. What do you think, what do you attribute to opening up that door for you or those doors that, the, you know, the kind of unconventional path to where you thought you would be heading, what do you think opened those doors for you? You mean what made me willing to say yes or what made the, the invitation come? I think we could start to start by what, what made you willing to say yes or be willing to say yes to those so opportunities. I haven't really thought about that except that I've always been interested in lots of things. Sure. Too many things to be a specialist. So I suppose that, that attitude oh, and a certain kind of basic curiosity about things made me uh, open to saying yes. You know, it was you, always hard for me to spend a lot of time practicing and making reads. Uh -huh. uh, so maybe it was just this is a great way to get distracted from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the so that that conflict or that tension between being a, a specialist and being a, a little bit more generalist in nature may have opened up more doors for you early in your career. It sounds like uh, I think that's right. I think it did, and it was also a basic tension in my life because in my musical life I was always working alongside and competing with people who were specialists. Yeah. And. <laughs> and I, and you know, I had the musicians' kind of OCD of wanting to be really good at what I did. Of course. So there would, was often a pull between even 
composing and performing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't always. It didn't necessarily make things easy, but it made them made it much more interesting for me. Yeah. Well, that's great. And it, I think I know that being involved with those computer people helped me see things about music that I wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Just as one example, I sat in an assembly one time at a school where these computer people were going to have a part of their research going on and the computer scientists were introducing their project to the parents and they were using all this lingo that was ordinary language to them but mm -hmm. the parents had no idea what these words meant and um, I realized we do that in music too we use our special music lingo with ordinary civilians and they don't know what we mean right and it was just an interesting revelation, and I, I don't think I would have noticed it sitting in and say a pre-concert lecture or a concert where somebody was talking to the audience, but I was able to notice it having gotten out of my usual and, field. And getting some of that diversity of thought in there yeah. uh, early on in your career. Very, and then I, very ran into, I ran into fascinating thinkers from lots of fields in that project because it pulled together lots of different kinds of people. So yeah. there was Tim Galway, a great thinker about learning, in, particularly in the sports area. I learned mm -hmm. a lot from him. Doreen mm -hmm. Nelson, who was an education researcher, who thought about learning and education in completely new ways, and other people like that who were thinking big thoughts. That's, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's My been pleasure. good to just catch catch you and catch you up with everybody for a few minutes here. And uh, I uh, look forward to working with you at the conference here in a couple of weeks. It's going to be fun. Be there. Yeah, come if you can. All right, thanks. See you soon.